Hey guys, Jess Halleck here. Today we're gonna to talk about foundation hair care, what to look for, what you should be using no matter what your hair type. I always get asked, what should I be using? What's your product recommendations? This is my hair type, what should I be putting on it? So today, today we're gonna talk about what you should be using and if you're not using this, what you should be looking for within the lines that you love. So the first thing you need to do is identify your hair type and targeted issues. Is your hair blonde or brunette or red or black? And what's the texture? Is it coarse, is it curly, is it dry, is it damaged? Is it any of those things because you wanna tailor the hair care line around that. Okay, so your first line of defense is your shampoo and your conditioner. You're in your shower, it's the first chance you get to give your hair the nutrients it needs. So when you're looking at a shampoo and conditioner, first you wanna find something that addresses the issue that you are wanting, like hydration, repair, any of those things, and then to know if it's a quality shampoo and conditioner, it needs to be free of a few ingredients. So you don't wanna see sulfate. Sulfate free means that it won't strip your color and it's gonna protect the natural pigments of your hair. Number two is phosphate free. That means that it's free of acids. And then the last one is paraben free, which is a type of preservative. And all those ingredients are usually in those mainstream products that I don't wanna name, but you know what they are. They are great for your hair, and honestly, after you put them on, it feels good, but it weighs your hair down, and over time, that buildup is more damaging than beneficial. And the last bonus, if you can find something that's gluten-free, that's always ideal. So after you've done your shampoo, you also want to incorporate a specialty shampoo. You do this once a week, maybe twice a week, depending, and if you wash your hair once a week, then do this every other wash. So you need a clarifying shampoo, my favorite is Unite Weekender because it's good for your hair. When you're looking for a clarifying shampoo, you don't want something that's going to strip the hair, so it needs to be sulfate-free and gentle, and they will probably advertise both on the bottle and look at the label, make sure there's no sulfate. A clarifying shampoo is gonna pull all the product that you've had in your hair totally out. It's gonna clarify your scalp, so if you have a flaky scalp, dry scalp, if you notice that your hair gets oily really fast, incorporate a clarifying shampoo. If you're trying to train your hair to go one more day, incorporate a clarifying shampoo. Your hair needs that reset across the board. But if it's a harsh one, like head and shoulders, then it will actually be more damaging to your hair than beneficial, because your hair is fragile and stripping it essentially would be a lot on your hair if it's not something that's gentle. So again, I love this one. It's the Weekender from Unite. It actually has keratin in it, so if you leave it on for a little while, it's actually good for your hair. Another specialty shampoo is if you're a blonde or a redhead, you'll want to use a toning shampoo. So for blondes, I love purple, I love the Blonda from Unite. Um, if you're a redhead, you'll wanna use the, something that has red pigments in it to richen up the color that you already have. And if you're a brunette and you want something to richen up, there's other lines that carry warm tones that'll put that rich pigment back into your hair. But a toning shampoo shouldn't be used more than once a week at the most. So if after you've shampooed and conditioned, your next step is you wanna incorporate a mask. If you haven't used one before, then incorporating one will make a massive difference. If you are using one, make sure that you're cycling it out. Your hair gets used to the products that you're putting on it. So after you've used one completely, don't buy the same one. Buy a different one. You can still buy it from the same line, but just rotate it out, even if it's just every other so your hair doesn't get used to it. But there's three types of masks. Number one is a keratin or plant protein based mask. So it's something that mimics the keratin that's in your hair so that it can repair. So usually blondes will use that for damage, brunettes as well, um, but something like the seven second from Unite has keratin in it and it's gonna help rebuild your hair. The second type of mask would be a moisture mask and those masks have mainly oils in them and it's not really repairing it, but it's an intense amount of moisture. So if your hair is coarse, curly, and it feels really dry or frizzy, incorporating a hydration type mask would fix, fix that. My favorite is Kevin Murphy Hydration. Um, Joyco Luster Lock is also a really, really good one. 
but putting that in your hair every once in a while will just give it that rich, supple, soft feeling that you've been lacking. The third type of mask is a cuticle mask. So it's something that repairs at the cuticle level. So it's putting the, those disulfide bonds back together that have been broken after you color or bleach. My favorite cuticle based mask is the Olaplex number no. three. There's only a handful on the market, but that is by far my favorite. It comes in this little bottle. And actually, one trick that I like to do is I'll put it in a little spray bottle. I'll fill the rest with water, shake it up, and spray it all over my hair so I can make it go a little bit longer. But this stuff is like liquid gold. Okay, now that we've showered, the next foundation products you need are gonna happen after you towel dry. So we've towel dried our hair, it's a little bit damp, we're gonna start to blow dry. The number one thing that you need is a leave-in conditioner. My go-to is the Unite 7 Second Leave-In. They also came out with a new one for curly hair, their Boing Curl Leave-In, which is amazing. But you wanna spray that in your hair, it's gonna be a little bit of keratin or it could have heat protectant or it just makes your hair soft. Different detanglers and leave-ins have different properties, but it's a great place to start to start brushing out your hair and just give it a baseline to work from. And then lastly, your other line of defense when you're about to prep your hair for heat is using an oil. Oils are so confusing because everybody has one. How do you know which one is good? You can look at the bottle and if you have been getting an oil that after you put it in your hands, if it just moves around and it's not really absorbing, that means it has a lot of silicone in it. Silicone based oils just sit on your hair. They can weigh it down. If you're blonde, it can make it more yellowy. You don't want silicone based oils. And if you're looking at oils and some are like eight, 10, $12 and then they jump to like 30 to 50, it's probably because the cheaper ones have silicone in them. So it feels good on your hair, but over time you're not doing yourself a favor. So a good oil will come from seeds. When you rub it in your hands, it'll absorb. You can almost put it all over after you put it in your hair. It's amazing. My favorite's the U oil. You'll notice a huge difference, but this, think of it as your long wear heat protectant. So putting this on wet will help you with your blow dry. It'll help you after you um, straighten or curl. It's a long wear heat protectant. And then if your hair is dry, after, you can still put a little bit in your hands and run it through after it's dry. So after you have put really good products in your hair, it doesn't stop there. You can absolutely ruin your hair if you have a bad brush. This is my favorite. I've talked about it on other videos. It's my favorite by far. Get a ventilated brush. The specific one, the Epic Wet Brush, is my favorite for lots of reasons. The, the bristles bend really well. It's curved like the shape of your head. It's ventilated. There's so many good things. And wet brush, um, especially their Epic line, it absorbs up to, I think, 400 degrees. So instead of the brush getting really, really hot, it's just transferring the heat to your hair so it blow dries quicker. But two sounds that you never wanna hear when you're combing your hair out. Number one is a ripping sound. If you're brushing your hair and it sounds like ripping, you're breaking your hair. I hear that if someone's using a comb when their hair is extra tangly. If you're hearing that sound, you're not combing it out, you're ripping through your hair. So that's one sound you never wanna hear. Number two, if you're brushing your hair out and let's say a few strands come down and then spring back up, if they're not, let's say your hair is this length and I'm brushing and I'm pulling it down, it comes about here and it springs back up, that's not good. It's wearing, a lot, wearing out the elasticity in your hair. You need the, that, I can't say it. The elasticity in your hair needs to stay intact for coloring and keeping it healthy. If your hair is curly and that starts to get worn out, your curls are gonna start to get stretched and not be as bouncy. If your hair is straight, that's just gonna cause damage and breakage. I see this most with paddle brushes. If your hair isn't supposed to be using a paddle brush, that's your sign. So this is always my favorite. It works on everybody. It's a ventilated brush and specifically this one from Wet Brush is my favorite. And last but not least, when it comes to foundation hair care, how you're wearing your hair up when you work out, when you're going for the gym, when you're, let's say you're a kid and you're in dance or anything, don't use hair ties. I have my own opinions about them, but the main reason is if you pull your hair back and you notice that you have all this little breakage all along your hairline and along the back, it's from your ponytail holder. Stick to scrunchies or bobbles. 
bobbles are my favorite because they can hold your hair really, really well. I can be running on the treadmill. I can have extensions in my hair. It holds the weight just fine, but they look like little key rings. It's silly, I know, but they work so well and they come in different sizes. This is a power, this is an original, and then they have a slim and a mini. So depending on your hair type and how thick it is, you can try different ones, but these are the best to sleep in. They're the best to put your hair up and they protect it so it's not gonna break. It takes the tension off of your hair, which is super important to not cause breakage. So there you have it. Those are my tips for your foundation hair care. If you're trying to navigate the line that you already love and want to make sure the ingredients are what you're looking for, or if you want to try out things from Unite, Kevin Murphy, I love those personally. And knowing where to start from your shampoo and conditioner all the way down to the brush and the hair ties that you're using. I hope this helped. Let me know if you have any questions or if you have any recommendations of product you'd like me to try. I'm always open to suggestions. Or if you have any comments, comment in below. I would love to talk to you. Thanks for following and like and subscribe.